Hello everybody, it's me, and this video is for those of you who are wondering what's involved in riding an electric foil board. A few years ago, I was a professional surf instructor in Hawaii, running a pretty large world-class surf school that I had started and created out of thin air, so to speak. So my qualifications of giving aid foiling advice is based on the fact that I personally taught over a thousand new e-foil riders how to do this like these guys they clearly had a good instructor because this was about an hour into their first lesson and they were absolutely crushing it so i have a few tricks and tips and techniques i can share with you if there's an efoil lesson in your near future i can guarantee you that watching this video and applying the knowledge that i share with you will get you up in foiling probably much quicker and easier than you would even think is possible now I want to stress that this is not a complete introductory lesson. I'm leaving a lot out, and before you get on one of these things, you're really going to want to have a professional instructor explain everything to you one-on-one, -on -one because like any and every athletic sport that combines speed with water, there is a risk of danger. I'll share with you some of my most important safety rules, which I repeated multiple times to each new rider I taught, both out on the water and during their pre-flight ground school briefing on the shore, which here was on the golden sands of Sugar Beach on the island of Maui between Kihei and Lahaina, where the waves were more often than not calm enough for beginners to learn easily and the water temperature was a steady 81 or 82 degrees year round and the only people getting stung by the very rare Portuguese man who wore stinging jellyfish was usually me. The beach lessons were about 20 minutes long. I refined and improved them for maximum enjoyment and learning. I am very confident that a good 20 minute lesson that explains everything about how to safely fly over the water is time very well spent. With no lessons at all, you could be out there for hours or days and still not figure it all out. My goal was to shorten the learning curve for new riders and maximize their success. Um, this video presentation is unfortunately an afterthought years after I retired from this sport, meaning if I had planned this out better I'd have much much better video clips that would be coherent and cohesive, but I'm just dealing with the very few clips that I did save. All right, here's me on uh, one of my fleet's larger boards. We had some big boards for trainers and some medium-sized boards and also some smaller boards for folks who uh, wanted a real adventure. You know, I might just call this whole thing from now on something like uh, Pro Instructor Reacts to uh, Noobs. Like, uh, like this. Boom. That was fine. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, number one, most important safety rule. Keep, keep your body parts away from the propeller down there. Because, you know, reasons. You don't ever want to use that wing down there as a step. Keep your toes away. This this is actually fine. No, no problem with that. Just keep your toes out of the propeller down there at the bottom. The next most important safety rule is knowing that there's a right way and there's a wrong way to dismount the board in the event of a water landing, of which you're probably going to have 8 or maybe 12 during your first hour. You want to do it safely so you don't get hurt. We're going to look at an example of a fine, uh, a fine dismount here. She's just going to step right off and nobody gets hurt again you don't want to you don't want to hit this thing if the board uh, starts tilting sideways and this comes up out of the water to one side or the other you're not going to want to be on that side of the board that's a perfectly fine water landing right there and here's another one he's going to lose control he's going to kick it away from him that's beautiful right there by the way if it looked like i was alarmingly close to uh, that rider. I wasn't. I mean, I was, but I had my camera zoomed in, so it wasn't as dangerous as, as that may have looked. All right, now we're going to see uh, another interesting dismount where the board, not me, but this next one coming up here, we're going to see the board get a little wild and crazy and gives you a good example of what we're dealing with. And Again, he, he jumped off on the correct side. That was perfect. If you fall off to the back, oh, that's fine. You'll never get hurt falling off to the back. All right, so uh, rule number one, don't, don't stick any body parts in the propeller. And rule number two, fall off the board correctly. And we'll be discussing that in a little bit more detail uh, coming up here. You control the speed with the wireless hand controller, which uh, floats, and you're not going to drop it, and it's waterproof, of course. And if you want to hold it out in the air like that, that's totally fine. You can spread your wings, or you can hold it in the air like the Statue of Liberty. 
yeah, you you go, girl. However, however you want to ride this thing, you you do you. That's Lisa. She's she's a really good e-foiler. The next very important safety rule is turning off the hand controller before you get back on the board. So after you fall off the board, you can catch your breath, turn off the controller, and then you can get back on the board. Uh, the pro tip, what I would do, is I would turn off the controller, I would put the strap between my teeth, and then I could reach up with both hands onto the handles on the board and just kind of flick the board underneath me while I slid up on top of that thing. The alternative is holding the controller in your hand. It's very easy to inadvertently bump that trigger on anything while you're climbing back on board. And if you're not ready, then you could have a little issue like this. Holy crap, let's see that again. Let's do this in slow motion. Yeah, you don't want to be behind the board climbing onto it and accidentally squeeze the trigger and, and have it do that. So, and that's why we wear helmets. Although I never had a board actually land on anybody's head, but there was a potential. So that's why everybody is wearing professional surf helmets uh, when they went e-fooling with me. If you like rules, I got one more. And then we'll get to the uh, techniques and basic principles here in, in just a minute. But no matter where you are, when you're on an e-foil, you're going to want to look out for and you're going to want to avoid everybody and everything else out there. Uh, that would include swimmers, snorkelers, scuba divers, kayakers, people on stand-up paddle boards. And in my case, that also included uh, these things. Uh, double hull and also single hull uh, Hawaiian outrigger canoes, which I always thought is so cool. This is this is one of the probably very few areas in the world where where you see e-foilers with uh, double hull outrigger canoes like this. And it's okay that I'm doing this because that's that's my wife right there. So no matter where you are, don't be an asshole on an e-foil. Stay far away from everybody uh, so that everybody feels safe. Okay, once you're out on the water with your uh, e-foil, the very first thing that I had everybody do is lay down and do a lap or two like this. Uh, most people got tired of it pretty quickly because you get really wet in the face. So then I'm like, okay, well, you can uh, start kneeling on this thing. Don't try and kneel on an e-foil when it's stationary. You're going to fall off. You got to get the thing going. It's like a bicycle. Speed is your friend. Speed is stability. The faster you go, the more stable it's going to get. And in terms of speed, everybody here is doing like maybe 12, 13, 14 miles per hour. You don't, you don't really need to go much faster than that. So I would have everybody do a lap or two on their knees. And then when they're ready, um, I'd have them stand up. And before they do any actual e-foiling, I would say just just ride it like, like this. Just ride it like this for a few minutes and just get used to it. You're gonna learn how that the you're gonna learn how the board responds to your uh, shifting body weight and to steer it. You just you just uh, lean a little bit, and you're gonna be maintaining the same speed the whole time. If you're lucky, your instructor will. Uh, set a speed for you and you can just mash your throttle trigger down the whole way and it'll max out at maybe 13 or 14 miles per hour and you're fine you don't need to uh, change the speed at all uh, in fact don't change the speed till you probably second or third lesson unless you're you're really good here's here's Pratik on his first lesson he was probably 15 minutes into his first lesson and he's just riding it like he should just on the surface of the water he's getting used to it and after he figures that out then we'll get to the oh he started e-fooling right there and then he immediately wiped out because he wasn't quite ready for that it happens so i tell people take your time do a lap or two spend as long as as much time as you need and then when you're ready you can do this and i'm going to get into some some very specific details about what my son carter just did right there how he got to that upright position without wiping out and you can see he's kind of low and now he's about maybe five inches above the surface you don't need to get very high to have a good time you can uh, you can just kind of skim the water like that and yeah he's doing great okay so you're going to want to keep the board flat and level the whole time you're doing this that is one of the very key basic principles every time you increase the speed the front of the board is going to lift up 
when you decrease the speed, the front of the board is going to plow down into the water. So every time you increase the speed, whether you're laying down or you're kneeling or you're standing, you're going to have to shift some body weight forward to keep that board flat and level. And when you slow down, you're going to have to move some weight to the back just to keep that board flat and level. What happens if the board is not flat and level? Well, you're going to have a really awkward angle of attack when the front of the board is sticking up in the air and it's going to be hard to control. Can you do it? Yeah. Does it look bad? Yeah. It's going to be a lot easier. Just keep the board flat and level, maintain the same, the same steady speed, and your instructor will hopefully be there right next to you and he'll help guide you along and see how you're progressing and send you along to the next steps when you're ready. Now this gentleman here, he's doing what we call knee foiling. Some people like to just spend their whole session doing that. And that's, that's fine, man. Whatever makes you happy. Here's my son Carter. Again, we're probably doing about 16 or 17 miles per hour here. You don't want to go too much faster than that. The, the faster you go, the more uh, concentration it requires to not wipe out. Uh, the f slowest I can do this was maybe 7 miles per hour. 10, 13 is totally fine. All right, we're going to see him stand up and then wipe out immediately because his balance wasn't quite perfect. In fact, he's already getting airborne there. And in he goes. And here is his handsome brother and my other son, Simon. I think this was Simon's very first lesson because he's still just cruising on the surface. He hasn't uh, figured out how to get airborne yet or he's still just getting used to this although we're going to see him get airborne here for just a second there we go right there as you can see it gets a little wobbly so when you're uh, when you're learning how to do this and you figured out how to um, do this part my next step is to do circles lean to your left lean to your right do big circles do sharp circles yeah he just did that again I, that may have been his first one or two ever right there that that may have been like probably 10 minutes into the first lesson because he, he is really good. This is one of these sports that you don't want to be in a rush to skip a step or two while you're learning how to do this. Make sure that your instructor is evaluating your progress and gives you a green light before you progress to the to the next level, which I'm going to show you here. Okay, we have a, a brand new rider with no experience. He's going to stand up here. Let's just Let's just watch this. Oh, oh my God! Oh, that was a really ugly wipeout. We're gonna we're gonna have to see that one again. There's a lot to unpack here. Uh, fortunately, I can see exactly uh, where and how everything went wrong. And this is not I'm not criticizing uh, Boo here. To, that's his name. I'm not criticizing him too much because this is like is maybe 15 minutes into his first lesson. And I've done this myself many, many times. Although I can tell you that generally speaking, wipeouts of this uh, nature are pretty rare. Um, so in a, uh, in a post uh, game analysis of what's going on here, basically he did not, uh, he didn't have a good enough stance when he stood up and then he got a little off balance and then there was just way too much flailing going on and he violated the, the cardinal rule about uh, which side of the board you want to jump off on. Or as I tell people, if, if you stay on the board, you won't fall off. Now, one thing that he did right here is he's got a hand on the front of the board right there. That's perfect. But he's basically using that to push himself up. And what you really want to do is have a hand on the front of the board, put some weight on it, hold that front of the board down, keep it flat and level while you maintain your same steady speed. And as you slowly stand up, if the board is tilting too much in the front, just lean forward, push a little bit more weight down with your hand, and shuffle your feet forward. Get that board nice and flat and level. You're gonna maintain the same steady speed. And when everything's feeling comfortable, then you can let go with your hands slowly and slowly stand up, adjust your weight forward or back if you need to a little bit. But if you wanna, if you wanna ride for like 500 feet with your front hand like a tripod down there, by all means, you go right ahead. Nobody's ever going to criticize you or your form. There's, uh, the people on the beach are going to look out there and go, wow, that, that's really cool, and especially if you don't fall off. Sandy here is having a great time riding it just like this. I, I tell people about 80% uh, of figuring out how to ride an e-foil is just getting comfortable with your balance, uh, being on a, on a moving board on the surface of the ocean. And the other 20% is figuring out how to maintain a, a steady speed. 
because of course if you if you slow down and speed up and slow down and speed up you're gonna have to move your body weight back and forward and it's gonna be difficult just, just keep a good speed here we have Lisa again we're in Ma'alai Harbor on a very overcast day getting ready to launch out into the bay you can see as she speeds up she's gonna move her feet forward a little bit just to get some weight front of the board and keep that thing down she's going to increase her speed a little bit more she's almost up on foil here let's take a quick glance over to the left where we can see the building where he used to live and uh, the united states coast guard station here's a young lady who's just figured out how to do this and she's going to ride it like that for a little bit and here's my son getting up pretty quickly but he's got good balance this looks like it was about 20 minutes into his first lesson because he's spending a bit of time on the surface of the ocean without actually e-foiling and what we can also see him doing is he just made a turn in two different directions which is important uh, some people can only figure out how to turn to the left or the right but if you want to get good at this you got to be doing figure eights out there now there is one more safety rule that I want to mention, which is when you fall off the board, if you're on the kind of a board that automatically stops when you fall off the board like all of these do, you're probably also going to be riding the same kind of board that can start right up again if you keep mashing down the throttle with your finger. So when you fall off, let, let go of the throttle. Just take your finger off the trigger. What I would tell my clients is, uh, I would say fall off the board and I want you to take your finger off immediately and point your finger up to the sky. Just aim your hand all the way straight up and then I can see visually from a distance that they're following instructions and I know that their board isn't going to keep uh, going 50, 100 feet past where they fell off. A very surprisingly large number of my clients were able to figure this out very quickly, very easily, and it was very rare actually that a client would uh, squeeze the trigger and their board would uh, keep going when they weren't on it. And of course after you fall off the board with your finger off the trigger, first thing you're going to do is turn off that hand controller so when you climb back on board it's safe and it's not going to take off from underneath you. All right, let's look at Carter again here. He's going to put all these skills together. He's maintaining the same steady speed. He's going to keep the board flat and level. It's not it's not that flat and level for me, but uh, he's making it work. He's going to get one foot forward up there. He's got good balance at this point. Oh, see, that's how quickly you can do it once you get good at this. Now, I tell people, when you first start e-foiling, just go up like a foot or so, just like this, and then you can go back down and just do gradual touch and goes, although he's getting some altitude right there. Yeah, he's doing good. All right, let's take a look at this young lady here. This She surprised me. She did really well. This was about 45 minutes into her first lesson ever, and she was... Uh, She's got it nailed. Her stance is pretty wide, but again, she's a beginner, so I'm not gonna. She doesn't lose points for that. She she does lose one point for not smiling as much as she should be, but she's concentrating a lot right here because she's developing some new skills. She's doing a gradual touch and goes. She's going in a straight line. You got to figure out how to go in a straight line and then start working on turning. Uh, turning is going to be about 45 minutes into your first session. She's she's doing great here. And uh, here's my son Simon again, uh, doing great. Uh, neither of my boys have done any uh, wakeboarding or um, water skiing. Wakeboarding, if you know how to wakeboard, you're going to be able to ride an e foil uh, like a boss. M maybe not like maybe not like these guys right away. What we have here is a, an e-foil towing a foil board that the gentleman in back there, he does not have a motor. He's just getting pulled along. Um, it, this is not easy. I don't know if he's making it look easy or not, but that's that's definitely an advanced skill. All right, what's this guy doing? Well, he's, he's uh, going in a straight line and he's, oh, look, he's gonna move some weight back. All right, so that is how we get actually up on foil. You're standing on the board, you're cruising along on the surface. When you are ready, and when your instructor says you're ready, you're gonna lean back just a little bit. This is presuming that you have your perfect center of balance. Oh, he's even got a turn in there. See, that's really good. 
Yeah, when you get a good stance and you're comfortable moving on the surface of the ocean and you and your instructor agree that you're ready to start doing this, the, the technique that's required is after finding your perfect center balance on that board is you're just going to simply lean back a little bit and the board will then magically rise up out of the surface of the ocean as long as you're leaning back after you come up a few inches or about a foot or so you're just going to lean forward again and the board will go back down the movements required to do this are very subtle if you look at my son simon here all you have to do is move your front leg just press down with your with your knee a little bit and that gets the board back down you lean back a little bit the board comes right up again now if you lean back and nothing magical happens it's because you don't have enough weight far enough back don't keep leaning further back so it gets uncomfortable what I want you to do is straighten out and then just move one of your feet back maybe an inch or so and then lean back again if nothing happens then you don't have enough weight back enough so just straighten out again move one or uh, both of your feet back an inch or so for most folks usually by the second or third adjustment up and away they go and for uh, most new riders it's as easy as that look at that we're, we're like 21 minutes into this video and i've explained about 90 percent of how to ride an efoil correctly and safely so uh, for the rest of the video i would encourage you if you're really into this to uh, look at the foot placement of where people are putting their feet on these different sized boards and look at the movements that they're making to control their altitude. Uh, you, yeah, you're going to have to make a, a constant series of little micro adjustments. You can see what I'm doing with my front leg right there to keep the board at whatever altitude you want. Now to make this easier for uh, for my riders, what I would have them do uh, during the beach lesson is I would have everybody draw a, a, a scale e-foil in the sand with their finger to include that black uh, traction pad on the top. And then I would have them practice the moves of, of kneeling on this thing and then using a hand in front to hold the front of the board down while they get up on their feet. You wanna be able to uh, predetermine which foot you're going to put forward. Occasionally, I would see somebody put a foot forward and then change their mind and switch the foot placement, which on an e-foil is, is not recommended. Oh, here's my son on a very small, very sporty board right there. Yeah, you want to figure out what your dominant foot is and put that one forward first all the time. You don't want to do a, a complete foot shuffle every time. So I would have pe uh, people practice on the sand with a simulated e-foil uh, drawn on the sand there and just practice some of those moves from the kneeling to the standing using a hand to keep that board down if you need to and then figuring out where exactly on the board your foot placement is going to be foot placement changes it's different for everybody depends on your skill level and your your weight and how well you can balance and the size of the board and the speed and the surf conditions there's a lot of variables involved again that's why you want an instructor out there with you while you try to figure this thing out now in terms of height and weight restrictions and requirements I can tell you having learned from first-hand experience that Anybody who weighs at, near, or over around 200 pounds typically is going to have, um, I would say, a much harder time than anybody who is lighter than that. And it's, it's typically because folks in that um, uh, weight range are usually not quite as flexible or as limber or as agile enough as somebody like Chris here, who is uh, very athletic. Uh, in terms of height... Um, I've had I had a couple clients who were six foot eight. They were able to ride it barely because they weighed way over two hundred pounds. And I've had some uh, little people out. One was three foot eleven. Another one was like four foot two, I think. Uh, and they were able to ride it no problem. I've had uh, clients um, in elementary school, and I've had uh, senior citizens um, almost in their eighties out here doing this so this appeals to a, um, a wide range of folks if you have the slightest bit of athleticism uh, or at least a little bit of adventure spirit yeah you can have a tremendous amount of fun out here now some of you may be wondering hey uh, can you put like two people on an e-foil and the answer is uh, maybe depending huge asterisk let's look at my two sons here 
These guys know what they're doing, otherwise I wouldn't condone this sort of behavior. Um, it was kind of amusing to watch that. This is about as good as they could get. Uh, Lisa and I tried it. Um, if she had gotten a, a lighter partner, it probably would have worked. I was way too heavy, the both of us. Yeah, you really start pushing the board's capabilities over 200 pounds, 220 or 230 really is max. Doesn't doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, you can even try to f flap your arms. It's, you're not going to achieve liftoff. What you really need are, uh, you need like two really athletic young ladies who combined weigh less than 220 pounds and then they can do this. These two ladies here know exactly what they're doing. They're both uh, surfer girls. And uh, this was a kind of a windy, choppy day, not a problem. We got Twala up front. We got the Swiss Miss in the back. If you watch her feet, she's going to move it back just a little bit. She's going to lean back a little bit, and that's all it takes right there. She's got a death grip on Twala in front. Monica's in the back. She's Monica's controlling everything. She's got the speed. She's controlling the balance, and she's already predetermined that in the event of a water landing, whatever side she goes off on, She's taking Twala with her, and I saw her uh, just kind of jump and uh, bring Twala with her uh, several times. It was pretty entertaining to watch. You can see they're doing a really good job foiling um, pretty consistently, doing a little bit of turning. Um, this is a lot harder than it looks. They're making it look really easy. This always elicited um, a bunch of hooping and hollering and cheering from the spectators on the beach. And Monica's decided she wants to look at a fish, so she takes Twala in with her. Check out the color of this deep blue Hawaiian water. This was on a, a little side adventure over to Molokini. I brought Chris with me. Actually, he's the only guy I would go with because he's a local tour guide expert. And uh, he gave us uh, the green light to uh, go across his channel when the weather conditions were good enough to do this. Um, the water was uh, a lot deeper than I was comfortable with, but it's kind of like it's kind of like if you're working on a ladder or a tightrope. At some point, it just doesn't matter how how high you are or how deep it is. You, it's 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 irrelevant. Still freaked me out though. So here we are on the backside of Molokini, where the surf conditions were a little bit uh, out of my comfort level too. Uh, after we got uh, done with this adventure on our way back, Chris was, uh, we stopped for a bit and we're floating out there on the water where it was a bit calmer and Chris was telling me stories about tiger sharks and, uh, oh, I see some flying fish right there. He's, yeah, he's telling me stories about tiger sharks and great white sharks and not, not happy stories. They were all like alarming stories and then he pulls a tourniquet out of his, his life jacket vest pocket to show me how serious he was about shark attacks so at that point we decided to leave because I didn't want to hear any more shark stories so we went to a different area where he didn't have any stories now check this out what we've got here is some glare on the water this was super distracting uh, really kind of uh, hypnotizing and not in a good way so I always told my clients um, out in Motlai Bay if you're uh, riding an efoil and you're going into glare like this you don't want to do that there could be a a floating coconut in front of you that you're not going to see or a, a swimmer um, yeah change your angle pick a different direction don't go into the glare and here we are in some water that was uh, yeah, I got some little bit of swells here once you get up on foil though it really doesn't matter what the surface of the water is like because you're just floating above it and it's it's a very smooth sailing experience it's like a it's like a flying carpet and I was just narrating here about how the swells were a little bit bigger than what I was used to and I was oh and he just fell in we were we were joking about hey man if you fall in it's going to be a little bit difficult getting started back up in this uh, surf condition and now I'm like great I got to circle around him here not fall off myself I gotta stay with him concentrating a lot not to fall off and there he's back on board and away we go this was back in uh, 2020 we were actually a couple of the first e-foilers to ever make it out to Molokini and here we are back in Ma'alaya I'm, uh, this is this is my typical uh, uh, stance when I'm uh, next to a new rider. I got my camera out. I'm recording Pratik, learning how to ride an e-foil for the first time. Here's another gentleman doing perfect. Here's Lisa. Here's here's my house right here. Yeah, that's my. Oh no, wait, that's not my house. 
Okay, we're just, I think we're going to be in montage mode for the rest of this video with just a whole bunch of random clips. Um, oh, I do not like the stance that she got right there, but that's a, that's a perfect dismount. That was awesome. And then we have this young lady again doing great. Um, so one of the questions uh, that would come up occasionally, people would be like, Are you, is this an actual job? Are you making money doing this? And uh, yeah, yeah, I was making, I was making pretty good money doing this. This was ridiculously fun, stupid, easy money. In fact, I was making more than double what I had been making in my previous career as a police officer near Seattle, Washington. Um, and I was, I was working way less hours. My, my typical day here, I'd, I'd hit the beach about 6 a.m. I would do a couple of lessons. And uh, when I say a couple of lessons, I mean a couple of sessions. There might be uh, five, six people per session. Uh, usually around 11 o'clock in the morning or by noon, the, the waves would start, the wind would pick up in Ma'alai Bay, and the waves would start getting a little choppy, and it wouldn't be uh, ideal conditions for beginners. So we'd usually wrap up everything by noon, and then I'd go home. And uh, yeah, this was just a, a ridiculous time in my life. I had, a, a, I had the time of my life doing this. And uh, I'm, I'm still quite proud of what I accomplished here. And I had a great time teaching people how to do this. Uh, like some of my favorite memories of all time are uh, teaching people how to ride an e-foil. And then when they get that first lift off, that very first moment where they, where they get airborne and the splashing stops and it gets really quiet and then they're just riding a magic carpet, a magic flying carpet over the water. And the looks on their faces of, of, of joy and surprise and uh, pride and thrill. Yeah, it, good times. This was way better than my previous career. Nobody wanted to see me when I showed up as a police officer. But here, everybody was laughing and having a great time. And when I was yelling at people about speed, it was usually like, Hey, speed is your friend. Speed is stability. You can go a little faster. You go faster, it'll smooth out a little bit more. One of the really cool things about learning how to ride an e-foil is that there's this huge sense of, of uh, empowerment and accomplishment that, uh, that people get when they can uh, learn how to do this. Because this is not like riding a, a zip line or something where you go in a straight line. No, when you're on one of these things, you're controlling your speed and your direction and your altitude. You got, you got a three-dimensional control of your environment. You can go to the left, you can go to the right. Uh, if you want to stop and take a break out there for 5 or 10 or 15 minutes, you can do that. You can't do that if you're, you know, kite surfing or something. You're kind of committed. Go fast, go slow, whatever speed you want, wherever you want. It's, it's all good with me. You can, yeah, you can, you got a lot of freedom with these things. Now, uh, here is the, this is the Monolana Pink Paddlers. These are all folks who, uh, are, were cancer survivors or uh, spouses were cancer survivors. There's, there's my wife in the middle there in the pink paddling, uh, paddling probably a little too hard. She was working on getting her qualifications to be a captain in the back of these things and uh, she uh, completely blew out a rotator cuff. So that was, that was the end of her paddling days, which was unfortunate. She really did enjoy that. Um, excellent whale watching out there. Um, there's a videos on YouTube of, of these paddlers uh, sticking their cameras in the water and you can hear the whales making their noises and sometimes those whales were only a few hundred feet away I mean they were pretty close yeah this was a this is a pr pretty cool area to do this kind of an operation in which which by the way was just a shower thought one day back before I had retired from my career as a police officer and it was a shower thought that I couldn't quite shake, so I'm pretty sure that this whole event was uh, predestined for me, and I feel pretty good about how it turned out, especially considering two other interesting things. One was that I had never been on a surfboard in my life, and I had never even seen one of these things up close and personal until I bought one. And uh, I also had absolutely no biz or I had no experience in running a business uh, of any kind. Um, so that was a bit of a challenge, but as the owner and operator and founder of this uh, operation, I made it work. Not only that, I had to teach myself how to do this. I did not have the benefit of, uh, of an instructor there with me for the first, uh, 
Oh, first about three or four hundred of those that I did. Yeah, this was my life for the first several months. So there was a lot of uh, water like that. So while I was trying to figure out how, well, actually after I figured out how to do this, then I started inviting people to come out with me because I had two boards at that point. And uh, at some point I just started giving out free lessons to uh, anybody. Uh, so my first 180 riders didn't pay anything. They were my guinea pigs. And on those folks I developed and figured out exactly how to present this in the most uh, cohesive and entertaining way possible to keep their attention, which, which did require some skill for about the 1% of my clients who showed up hungover from uh, um, partying a little too hard the night before. I get it, you're on vacation, it's Maui. But I told everybody beforehand, when you show up for your lesson, you're really going to want to be well rested with a, a full stomach because you're going to need a lot of energy to do this. So do you have what it takes to try to learn how to ride an e-foil? Well, um, it's about, like with anything in life, it's about 90% mental and 10% physical. I've seen some folks with, um, the folks that I didn't think would be able to do this, and I'm not picking on anybody that we're looking at right now. I've had some folks who are pretty heavy, some folks who are um, not flexible, um, and they did really surprisingly well. The one, I think the one thing that you really need aside from mental fortitude and not being hungover, because you, you definitely can't do this drunk or, or even hungover. No, the one thing you really need is balance. And if, if you, you know, if you really suck at the whole balance thing, then this, this is probably not going to be for you. Now, what keeps the board from just coming up out of the water completely? Yeah, it's your balance and depth perception. You're gonna, you need good vision to do this too. So to uh, demonstrate what happens if the board does get too high, I have my favorite son and his handsome brother here. Oh wait, this is Carter. Yeah, okay, look at that. He just, what happened? Let's play that again. Let's do that in slow motion. All right, so what we can see here is he's, he's, he just kept leaning back. And that's what happens if you just keep leaning back. The board will keep coming up higher and higher out of the water. And when you lean forward, the board will level out or go back down. But if you keep leaning back, yeah, the board will keep coming up out of the water. And then the propeller comes up out of the water. And then it's just sucking air. And you're going to slow down faster than you can react. And you're going to fall off the board. So you got to, it, there's a, just a constant series of little micro adjustments. You got to train your brain to connect to your knee so you can press down or release pressure with your front foot to keep that board flat and level at all times and maintain a steady speed. And when you start to, and you're just going to learn all this going straight. And then when you get comfortable with all of these steps, then you can start learning how to turn and turn tighter and then start turning really tight and carving and seeing how slow you can make circles and that's when it gets really fun and this is not always Kenny Loggins danger zone or ACDC thunderstruck now nah, for me most of the time it was it was Pink Floyd because I was just chilling out there it was really I mean it's a magical experience to be like your eye level is like seven feet above the warm tropical water in Hawaii and the wind is warm and the water's warm and it's just so quiet and chill uh, if you ever get the opportunity to do this I really highly recommend it now one of the uh, other questions that has come up uh, did I ever like have any celebrities out there rich and famous people and the answer is yes yes and Yes, I've had some billionaires out there and a lot of multimillionaires and some celebrities. It was most of the time I didn't know who they were. There'd be uh, other writers on the beach whispering and pointing, and I'm like, what? And they're like, that's, those, that's the couple from The Bachelor. And I'd be like, oh, that would explain why they're so good looking. Yeah, I met a few VIPs who uh, had been referred to me by hotel concierges that I had working relationships with. Um, some of these people uh, had been on magazine covers. We'll just we'll just leave it at that. Hey, this is Ka'ana Pali. That's a wonderful area to e-foil around. It's a little bit better than Lahaina because there's no boat ramp that you have to deal with. You can just launch directly from the beach. Yeah, this was uh, just a couple of years before they had that big fire. So when I had clients out on the water who were demonstrating an exceptional aptitude, I always gave them the opportunity to upgrade 
to a sportier board. Uh, we had some really big trainer boards that were kind of like driving a big old school bus. Uh, put people on a smaller board like this, and uh, they said it was like a Ferrari. You could uh, you could make really sharp turns on those things, and it was a, a really fun challenge to uh, to try and expand the horizons on that. Again, which is another great thing about e-foiling, is you're not just along for the ride. You're learning some some really empowering skills. I can't tell you how many times I saw people show up on the beach almost puking nervous and I, I would I would present everything really low key, really casual, no pressure. I told them they didn't have to do anything they didn't want to do out there. And then they would figure out how to do something like this. And you'd see them come back on the beach and they'd be like an inch taller. Uh, yeah, this was a huge a self-confidence booster for a, a lot of people and I, I did hear back from some uh, who told me that this was one of the best experiences in their entire lives now all these videos and all these uh, pictures that I took uh, I gave them away free to, to anybody who came out and rode with me uh, I didn't charge extra for that because that's I that's that's a bullshit business model where you, you take pictures of people and and then you charge them extra no, everybody got pictures in the videos. I, I probably spent about 40% of my time out... Hang on. <laughs> I probably spent about 40% of my time out there uh, with a camera in my hand, taking pictures and videos. Um, I also offered free rides to anybody in the Maui Canoe Club, uh, where my wife was uh, a member of, and she'd ride those, those pink uh, canoes. So I had quite a few of those members come out, some of them uh, more than a few times. And in fact, I just kind of became the unofficial photographer for the Maui Canoe Club there for a while because I was able to get some some pretty interesting angles of, of pictures and videos that uh, most of them had never really seen like that before. And uh, yeah, I would uh, I would just make huge albums with uh, compilations of photos and, and videos, and they would invite invite me out to special events. And uh, so when you see me circling these canoes. Um, the main reason why I'm doing that is because I'm actually taking pictures and videos to share with them later and, and they were cool with that. And if you want to see what the photographs look like, I, I uh, produced another video prior to this one that has all the best pictures. Some of them are, are really good, even better than uh, some of these videos here. Now in this next video we have an older gentleman who gets max altitude and we're going to see how he handles this. He's really high up in there. He's Max right there, he started slowing down and then in an attempt to recover he ow, yeah, he fell off on the wrong side again, but he he dove clear, so no harm, no foul um, pretty good for an old guy, um, and here he is again, and he's going to get up really quickly that's that's about as quickly as you can get up on an efoil now, I would have to tell the younger folks the the younger kids the the ones who had actual surf experience. Before you get up on an e-foil that quickly, you're going to want to do it slowly at least two or three or four times just so you can get a feel for it. Um, and that's one of the, that's another pro tip. You can't pop up onto a surf or on an e-foil like it's a surfboard because it's not. Regular surfboard is just going to keep um, moving on the surface. But an e-foil, when it's underway, you jump up on that thing you get some air between your feet and the board the board's gonna come up right under your feet and you're gonna lose control pretty quickly so slow is pro when you're getting upright on an efoil at least until you get used to it very common mistake for people to try and rush that uh, the this, this step where they get up slowly no just take your time and uh, you'll figure it out just like this guy this is like an hour all these people this is like an hour into their first session and they're just having the time of their lives, learning a new skill, and they, they went home with some really cool pictures for their uh, social media accounts and Christmas cards or holiday newsletters. So uh, that's that's pretty much it. I've, I've actually um, run out of things to say, thank God. Actually, I've run out of things to say that are relevant to this video, which... Um, is, is, again, it's for people who want to learn how to ride an efoil. Um, I, do, I, I did learn some things about how to do this that I could share with you all. Um, and I also did it for myself just so I could have uh, something to uh, 
watch when I get old and feeble, and this this will remind me of my glory days. Um, yeah, this is this was not a for-profit uh, um, video. Wow, look at this guy. He's gonna wipe out. That's pretty good, though. I mean, he was he was sucking air with the prop, and he he almost recovered. So yeah, I think uh, I think I'll just shut up now. I'll end it. Uh, you got like another. I think you got like two minutes of uh, just ambient sound after this. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope in some way, shape, or form, uh, this inspired you. That's like, that's a little close. Oh. <laughs>